guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. I hope you're all well. Um, I'm very well, thank you. Um, we've just been up at the winery we got married at. We went to have lunch there and give them a thank you card and had, had some nice fudge and brought home some wine. So I'm a few glasses in and I'm feeling good. <laughs> um, it's been ages since my last video. I know that, I'm really sorry. I actually forgot one thing I was gonna show you. You're just going to have to hold on a minute while I find it. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a while since my last video. It's been a crazy month. I mean, we got married and after that I thought life would go back to normal. And it kind of did, but it was just busier. <laughs> um, because everyone wants to see us and congratulate us and I went straight back to work, but work has been harrowing. like. Um, the less said about that the better I think um, let's just talk about the stitching I've been doing though which I do have a few things to show you but not that much so after my last video I was still finishing off mania which actually went into the beginning of June for me because I got married um, and I did actually have a finish in mania this is my wedding sampler love and wisdom by the drawn thread it says, wisdom tells me I am nothing, love tells me I am everything, and I finished it. And I put our name and wedding date there instead of the alphabet. And there's a whole alphabet full of specialty stitches in this centre part here. Every stitch um, has a name according to which letter of the alphabet it is. So that's very nice. And I really love it. It's gorgeous. It's very pretty. I'm very happy with it. Um, it was a quick stitch, you know, band samplers are always quite quick. The border, of course, took the longest. Even the flowers on the borders all have specialty stitches on them. And I love this. It's really pretty and I'm very happy with it. Um, but I have already showed you this in the Mania video. Um, since then, I have not worked on very many pieces. Um, I'll show you why in just a moment. I'm just going to take another hour to wind this up. <laughs> um, I'd like to get this framed, I think. Or I should learn how to make it into a bell pull, or just a, a vertical hanging at least. I'm still rolling. It's a very long piece of fabric. The fabric is really nice. It's called, um, the colour is Sunflower Seed and it's called Legacy Linen by Access Commodities. And it's so thick. It's really like, you can hardly see the holes through it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's very thick. The holes, are, the holes aren't small. They're easy to see, but it's just really bulky plump sort of linen. I think I think Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, she talks about, does she say plump linen? It's, it might be like that. It's really just, it's really like juicy and you, I don't know, it feels almost bouncy. When you squish it up like this, it's bouncy. It's really nice, really nice linen. Um, okay, so I have done a little bit of work on Anda Forest Grew. I have returned to my um, two motifs per week and this is what we're up to. I haven't done this weekend yet. So what's new? I did this tree in Mania. I did the deer in this tree, these mushrooms, that tree, the bird, maybe that tree as well and the rabbit since the last time I saw you. I can't remember but it's looking good. It's coming along. The edge of the passion is like basically right here. So I'm very close to having finished the whole bottom half. Um, yeah, I love this. It's so pretty. The colours are lovely. It's always fun to work on. It's a little fiddly because there's so many colour changes, but that is And a Forest Grew by Rosewood Manor. Everyone knows. <laughs> um, I've also been working on Nora Corbett. Uh, this is called Bella Portraits Part 2. This is Bella Butterfly and Bella Bee. Um, Bella Butterfly is the one on the top. Bella B I completed last year. Bella Butterfly, here she is. This is what I've done so far. Excuse my hanging thread. I started on the skin just a little bit on her skin at the top of her head and then I just stopped stitching mid-thread. I've kind of only been working on this when I go babysitting at my sister's house or for some reason I don't want to sit in my chair and stitch. I want to go and sit out in the living room or in my bed. I'll work on this because it's small and easy to carry. Um, and the only other thing I've been working on that's had the vast majority of my stitching time this month has been Sarah Brazier. 
Sorry, there's just some glare from this light I'm using. There we go. Sarah Brazier. Um, and I know I showed you this when I bought it in my last video. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I still love it. Um, Hands Across the Sea, Nicola Parton. Sarah Brazier. This was the Queen of the May chart for this year, the limited edition. I was very happy to snag a copy. And I've been working on this quite a lot. And this is what I have done so far. Oh, the fabric looks so good in this. It's really hard to photograph this fabric and get an accurate picture. But what you're seeing here is like perfect. It's pretty perfect. Um, so the fabric is a 46 count linen um, from Exju Design. It's not a particular color. I just showed her the chart and told her what size I wanted and she just dyed me. I said, go for it. And she dyed me this and I love it. Um, so custom dye from Exju Design. She's always amazing. Um, yeah, so I've completely finished page one, two, and three. Um, working on page four at the moment, and yeah, I still have a long way to go. There are 35 pages in this chart, so um, all the way across the top will be seven pages, and then there are still four more rows. So a lot of work this is, but it's really, actually really fun to work on. The, um, the border gets a bit boring, all the flowers. I'm going to try and rest this on here if that's not too close. All right. Yeah, so all these flowers are a little boring to work on. Um, but the most boring part is this double tram line, single cross filled with, filled with satin stitch. So yeah, I, I've lost a bit of steam and I sort of try to alternate one thread of the boring stitching with the fun stitching now. Um, yeah, so I'm going away on my honeymoon next Sunday. And by then, I was hoping to get all the way to the edge here, but it's just not going to happen. Just not going to happen. I would like maybe to, uh, let me see, maybe I'll finish this centre part, then I'll try and finish this border and down this side of the border so that page is almost done. Then I'll be happy. If I can get that done by Sunday, that'll be good. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. Um, I love this. I love this so much. I can't stop working on it and I wish I could take it with me to Europe to stitch on. Um, I'm not sure what I will take. I was thinking of taking this, but there are a lot of colours with this and it's just really bulky to carry so I won't take that. I'm thinking of taking, um, I don't want to take something on a very small count of fabric because I might be stitching in hotel rooms or on buses where there's not good light. I obviously don't want something very large because I'll be on a small aeroplane you know, in my aeroplane seat or, you know, I just don't want to be carrying big projects or things with lots of colours. So I'm not sure yet what I'll bring. Um, I might start something new. I'll think about it. I'm certainly planning on buying plenty of projects when I'm over there, so I'll have plenty to, st plenty to stitch, don't worry. Um, yeah, so I have a couple of more things to talk about. First of all, I'm going to talk about monetization. So. I am turning off monetization on my channel. Um, I turned it on about exactly a year ago, pretty much, last July or last June. Um, and it was kind of an experiment to see how it went. Um, it took me an entire year, but last month I got a check from Google for $112 Australian dollars um, because you don't get paid out until you make $100. So I got my check for $112 and I'm really happy. <laughs> but then when I think about the fact that it took me a year to do that, and I think about the number of views I had, which was thousands and thousands, and the number of ads people had to sit through, which was more than thousands. Um, I, I just don't think it's worth it. You know, for every single person to sit through an ad at the beginning, a pop-up ad in the middle, ads on the sides, whatever. I don't know exactly how the ads work because I have YouTube Premium, so I don't see the ads. But I just don't think it's worth the inconvenience to all of you people who watch my videos, um, it's just not worth the inconvenience for $100 a year. Like a hundred, look, I might sound snobby or something, but a hundred dollars kind of isn't worth the effort for you guys because I mean, I've spent more than a hundred dollars just on postage for giveaways this year. You know, a hundred dollars is, it's great. And I've, and I've have gone and spent that hundred dollars on charts, which are coming in the mail to me and I'm very excited about, but I think I'd rather that you guys have a better experience watching me than once a year get eight new charts, you know? So that's where I'm going with that. Let me know what you think. 
because I don't know I just don't think it's worth the inconvenience so sometime in the next couple of days I'm gonna turn ads off um, turn off monetization and just I'm not doing this for the money that's very clear no one is doing this for the money you can complain about youtubers monetizing or putting out lots of videos and monetizing and whatever I've heard people say things about certain floss tubers but nobody is getting rich doing this trust me <laughs> no floss tubers at least so let me know what you think i'm probably going to turn it off i have a giveaway another giveaway um a couple of videos ago this is late i was meant to draw this in the last video but before mania i actually said i would give this away this is gaze a while by the heart's content it's stitched on 40 count silk gauze um i've stitched it it's up on my wall over there. Um, I will include a piece of silk gauze in here. There are plenty of silks left for almost every color to restitch the whole thing. The pattern's in here, as you can see. And I'm giving this away. People already commented on the video back in April, and the winner was Liana H. So I'm going to leave a comment on your comment, <laughs> Liana, um, and I'll give you my email address, and you can let me know what your address is, and I will post this to you with a piece of silk gauze. So happy stitching, Liana. Um, I have a little bit of haul, but not much. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I needed to talk about. Not really. Um, after this video, I need to make another video for my Year of Whips media catch-up. So it's just a little whip parade of all the Year of Whips pieces that I've worked on this year. Um, so that'll come tomorrow or next weekend or something. Um, so haul, I got... My Beloved's Gift, MH1656, from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. And if you don't haven't heard about this, this is reversible. You know I like my reversible work. So it's a band sampler, a very big one. And there's going to be a lot of annoying tentacle stitching because all, it's all reversible. I think this is, the, this is the front and this is the back. So I'll work on that one day when I'm 80 years old. Um, I've got, see I know it's been a long time since my last video because I have three fabrics of the month to show you. This is my Nana's favourite part of the video. She said she just loves the crazy fabrics I get. That's not what she said, she doesn't like them. <laughs> um, but I do. So this is my last fabric of the month from Colour Cascade Fabrics. Probably also the less said about that the better. Um, this is March fabric of the month. The colour is Shortest Straw. And this is it. It's kind of weird. It's, it's, uh, I have no idea what I use this for. It's kind of crazy, right? It's showing up a bit more subtle on the camera. It's actually really, really bright, bright, bright yellow. Yeah. Um, yeah. There will be something that is perfect for, I'm sure. That's how I feel about all fabric. Immediately I look at it and I'm like, ooh, what am I going to do with that? But I always come across a chart and say, Oh, I actually know what fabric would be perfect for that. So there's that one. I've lost the plastic. Um, hands Across the Sea fabrics. This is Dryad. This is June fabric of the month. Dryad. Um, it's more subtle than what you're seeing on the camera. The contrast isn't so great. Um, but yeah, it's pink and green very pretty again no plans no immediate thing jumps to mind as to what I'll put in here but something will go lovely lovelily something will go very nicely um, and it's due designs honestly she's my favorite I may as well quit all the other fabrics forever because I just want to stitch on her fabrics forever so the free pattern she gives us this month is a patriotic one for the Americans 4th of July and look at that floss red white and blue and green and brown and it's all the colors that are in this pattern so that's pretty cool that is pretty pretty cool right um the problem with these variegated threads is i don't think they ever look good when they're stitched up when they're so highly variegated i have no idea what i'll do with that probably re-gift it to someone um and the fabric of the month this month is called sampler khaki and it's of course 46 count linen Sampler khaki. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. 
again, it looks um, much crazier on the screen than it is in real life. It doesn't look quite so tie-dyed in real life. Maybe that's better. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's more what it actually looks like. <laughs> um, yeah, again, I love them. I love them. I love my fabrics. I've got to stop spending money on fabric though. Um, I wouldn't dare to add up how much money I've spent on fabric in the last two years. Luckily, I don't need to. <laughs> so I can just live in denial. <laughs> and the last piece of haul I got was my Inspirations magazine. I've talked about this magazine before. It's an Australian embroidery magazine. It's not cross-stitch. It's, it sometimes has counter thread projects. It sometimes doesn't. But it's got lots of different projects. And this month has this amazing... It's a sweet bag on the cover. Oh, I love it. It's amazing, isn't it? Look at that. I mean, well, it's stitched on just 40 count linen. It is counter thread with lots of fancy embroidery stitches. I'd love to do this. I would love to do this. It's actually double sided. There's a different pattern on the other side. And that's the same side. Look at these pictures. I mean, look at that. Oh, this magazine is needlework pornography. It's amazing. Um, I would buy the magazine just to look at the pictures. There we go, there's the other side. With the little pea plants, look at them, they're so cute. Yeah, so I would love to stitch this. God knows when I would. God knows, I mean look at, look at this. Look at this background stitch here. What is that? Is that beads? I don't know. Look at those beads there. Amazing, right? Completely amazing. Oh, the photography in this magazine, to die for. So there's so many beautiful things in this magazine, as always, I've showed you before. In Flanders fields, poppies, embroidery. Um, I'm not doing a real flick through, I'm just showing you a few things. There's another, there's usually only one counter thread piece per magazine. This time we get two. This is Betsy Morgan, and they are tooth fairy boxes. So that's the under the sea one, I guess that's the boys one, and this is the girls one. I'm trying to show you. There you go. So they're very sweet, very, very sweet, and they each have. A little matching bit on you so you're supposed to you know the child puts their tooth inside on the cushion and then you put your money on <laughs> exchange it for the tooth the tooth fairy puts the money on in exchange for the tooth right and you can see there's lots of lovely specialty stitches on this um, my mum's taken a lot of classes from Betsy Morgan and I missed out um, but I would love to I love her designs um, everything else in here is other types of embroidery with some gold work um, I think there's a thread painting piece in here this month. Oh, there's some stump work. Look at those flowers. It's dimensional. Crazy. Look at that. Oh, let's talk about stump work. Remember my needle winder? The, the round one with the acorns and the embroidered leaves and the acorns that I made myself and I stuck them onto a button and made them into a needle winder? Well, it died. It got eaten by my dog. <laughs> Um, I was pretty heartbroken. I felt terrible. Um, she ate a bead, so I hope she's okay. She hasn't shown any bad effects yet, but um, I'm so sad because that was so annoying to make. <laughs> and I'm just sad it's gone. And I feel bad for not looking after it. Yeah, anyway. Oh my gosh, look at this. Sunbird. If you're into needle painting, I am not. I cannot do it. Look at this. So. Look at that. My gosh, needlework pornography, right? Amazing. Anyway, Inspirations Magazine, I just wanted to show you this because I love it. Oh yeah, I have writing on my hand. It says Pet Circle because apparently that's a good place to buy dog food. All right, um, I did my giveaway. I talked about monetization, showed you whips. Do you want to see Sarah Brazier again? Because <laughs> I love her. All right, um, that's all I have to say, I think. I'm going to go and make my Year of Whips update and then I'm going to work on Sarah Brazier for the rest of the night. I love her. I have a question. I need to make grind guards for this scroll frame, you know, so they... Oops! Might have just knocked over the line. Um, so, <laughs> um, there'll be elastic around here and a cover across the top. Anyone know of a tutorial or something where I can do that? I'm sure, I'm sure I can figure out the actual sewing, but the measurements is what I want help with. So if I know that this is 90 centimeters across, how, how long should my elastic and my fabric be? That's what I'm wondering. Okay. 
that's all guys i will see you after i get back from europe i'm looking forward to my trip i'm going to lots of places i'm planning to go to um Saju in paris and les bonnes de dame i'm gonna find some shops in england um i'm really hoping to go to bro de paradise i can't pronounce that properly um in the netherlands that's um, Ingeborg's LNS, so I'm hoping to go there because I want some of those threads and those patterns by Yoko Treba Denise. Don't laugh. <laughs> I tried. I'm sorry. Um, Yoko Treba Denise. <laughs> um, so I'd love to go there. I'm really hoping to fit that in. Um, the only problem is I don't think she's open on the day that we'll be in that area. I think she's like only open on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday or something weird like that. I can't remember. I need to check again. I will check again. Um, anyway, I will have good updates for you when I get back. I will probably have some really good haul. Haul! Um, yep, that's all. I'm going to sneeze. So I'll see you next time. Bye.